Hello, this is Jeremy Richmond presenting a case of transoral robotic thyroidectomy from our early experience at Johns Hopkins Hospital. This case involves a 17-year-old otherwise healthy female with a sudden onset left complex thyroid nodule. Preoperative fine needle aspiration demonstrated a tippy of undetermined significance. The patient was very motivated to avoid a visible neck scar. Here we have the patient on the operative table with the neck gently extended and a shoulder roll underneath the shoulders. The lower lip is infiltrated with 1% lidocaine with 1 to 100 pounds of part epinephrine. The lower part of the face and neck are prepped and draped in a sterile fashion. The mouth is cleansed with hibiclens in water. The lower lip incision is marked with a 15 blade and a tooth guard is used to protect the lower dentition. The procedure is then initiated with a 15 blade cutting horizontally through the mucosa and blunt dissection is carried down to the inferior aspect of the mandible with bovial electric cautery between the mentalis muscles. At this point, a varis needle with dilute epinephrine and saline is passed through the incision into the sublatissimal plane in the neck and hydrodissection is performed with the epinephrine and saline. The needle is passed in a fanning motion in the sublatissimal plane Next, a blunt-tipped probe is passed through the incision once again into the subplatismal plane, and multiple passes are made in order to create a blunt subplatismal dissection. Here, the central cannula is passed through the incision anterior to the mandible and into the subplatismal space, and insufflation is maintained at 6 millimeters of mercury. Stab incisions are then placed through the lower lip in the vestibule through the lateral ports, then there's hydrodissection is performed with dilute saline, and the lateral cannulas are placed, again, anterior to the mandible into the subplatismal space. Dissection is initiated with standard laparoscopic instruments. Here we have the view in the subplatismal plane, looking at the median raffae, which is being divided with the hook cautery. A Maryland dissector in the left hand is used to grasp the strap muscles and gently elevate them anteriorly. Here the strap muscles are being bluntly dissected off the left thyroid lobe. A suture is passed transcervically through the strap muscles and back out through the skin in order to provide elevation of the strap muscles off the thyroid lobe. Further blunt dissection is done around the lateral and inferior aspects of the thyroid lobe. And here we've switched to our harmonic in the right hand. Medially we have the trachea with the thyroid lobe. Here you can see the pyramidal lobe being elevated off the trachea and being dissected with the harmonic. Attention will now be turned to the superior pole of the left thyroid lobe. The superior pole is grasped, pulled anteriorly, and dissection is proceeded with the harmonic. Here we have division of the superior pole vessels. And at this point, the laparoscopic instruments are removed and the Da Vinci SI robot is docked. All further dissection of the thyroid lobe is done with the robot with excellent three-dimensional visualization and wristed instrumentation. A standard left thyroid lobectomy is then performed. As you can see, one of the advantages of the robotic instrumentation is the wristed instrumentation, which allows you to curve around the thyroid lobe 
grasp it and retract it medially. Here we have a long blunt tipped nerve stimulating probe which confirms electrical integrity of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The left lobe is further retracted medially and dissected with the robotic harmonic instrument. The last attaching fibers are taken down and the left lobe is completely mobilized. At this point, the robot is undocked and a laparoscopic endocatch bag is passed through the central port into the neck. The specimen is passed into the bag and then retracted completely within the bag through the incision. At this point, laparoscopic instruments are used once again. Hemostasis is confirmed, the wound was irrigated, and the strap muscles are reapproximated with a locking suture. Finally, the lip incisions are closed with absorbable gut suture. And the tooth guard is removed. This is the final appearance of the lip incisions. A jaw bra is placed to gently compress the neck. No drains are placed. Postoperative laryngoscopy demonstrates full mobility of both vocal folds. And this is the postoperative appearance of the patient 10 days after surgery, demonstrating a full lower lip movement, intact sensation of both mental nerves, and an excellent overall cosmetic appearance. Thank you very much.